Hello, movie lovers. How you doing? It's Friday. You know what that means, right? Yeah. This is a video from Bob talking about the movies he watched this week. That's all it is. Simple little video saying what movies I watched this week. And I rate them. I go from a 1, which doesn't happen often, to a 10. A 10 is very hard to get for me. I've only given out one 10, and that was the movie a few years ago, Lincoln, if everybody remembers that. I like that so much, I gave it a 10, but that doesn't happen often. That was the only one that I ever gave a 10 to. So anyway, let's get on with the movies. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Anyway, let's talk about the movies I watched this week. Netflix. Yeah, I got to get my money's worth. Right, Dave? Anyway, I watched two movies on Netflix. And I finished watching... I watched... Uh, what else did I watch on Netflix? Um, Sabrina. You know, Sabrina the Witch. I thought that was all right. I liked it. It was fun. Anyway, Netflix is... Canceling a lot of the movies, eh? Or, not movies, TV shows. Daredevil. I don't know. I don't know what they're up to. They're up to something. But anyway, I watched Hostiles, the Western movie with uh, Christine Bale. Story uh, starts off with uh, he has to, the idea behind the movie is he has to take the chief back to his home, I think, which is in Montana, right? So it's a story about him taking the chief, his son, his son's wife and kid and sister um, back home. So he picks a few men, you know, to go along with him, and off they go. It's a very interesting story uh, about from how he, you know, gets from where he's at to take the chief back home. A lot of things happen. People got killed. Yeah, uh, so you know, it's a very, I, I liked it. I, I thought it was a very good movie. Uh, it was a, worth uh, a watch. And if you haven't seen Hostiles, and if you like westerns, watch Hostiles. I give it a seven out of ten. That's fine. It's all right. Nothing wrong with it. And the other movie I watched on Netflix was uh, um, Christmas Chronicles with uh, Kurt Russell. You know, and he's two kids. Uh, brother and sister, and their mother's off working on Christmas Eve. She has a phone call, so she goes off to work, which is, I don't know, kind of hard to believe, but I guess it happens. So off she goes, and now these two guys get a bright idea to film Santa Claus, you know, when he comes down the chimney and, you know, puts the toys under the tree and stuff like that, right? So anyway, it leads to that, and then, you know, they're outside, and they, anyway, they jump in the sleigh with Santa Claus and off they go. All kinds of fun ensues. Ensues? Ensues? Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it's a real good part, a couple of parts in this movie where uh, Kurt Russell's doing Elvis. He's in jail. There's a whole band in jail. And they're doing Elvis songs. But anyway, it's hilarious. It's, it's a good, fun movie. If you haven't seen uh, Christmas Chronicles on Netflix yet, it's worth a watch. It's a good little, fun little Christmas movie. I thought I liked it. I thought it was okay. Nothing wrong with it. So it gets a 7 out of 10. That's pretty good. And let me see what else movies that I watch. Anyway, let's throw that over there. I watched <clears throat> from this set, which I bought for... Oh, what? How much did I pay for this? I think I paid $10 for this a few years ago. It's a lot of more money on Amazon now. I don't know why why movies cost so much money on Amazon. I don't get it. It's, you know, crazy. I was looking for a new uh, Christmas story. You know, Ralphie, shoot your eye out? Well, anyway, 
I can't find mine. I borrowed one from my daughter. I can't find my Christmas Story movie. Anyway, I looked to see how much a new one would cost me, and I think it's around 50 bucks on Amazon. That's crazy. That's a dub. The, the one I had was a dub, two two CDs, right, or DVDs, two DVD set, right? And I didn't pay fifty dollars for it when it came out, about eight, nine, ten years ago. I don't know what it was, but anyway, I can't find it, so I borrowed it off my my daughter. Anyway, um, let's get back to what I watched this movie, All Mine to Give. I've seen this movie a few times over the years. I watched it this week. Story about um, um, man and woman coming from uh, Scotland ends up here in, you know, I mean, not here, but I guess in America. And the story about them and building a log cabin and having six kids. So, and then the dad gets sick and dies and the mom gets sick and dies and the six kids are on their own. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. If we talk about getting the clinics out, we better set up the box right in front of you on the table. Because this one's a tearjerker. You'll cry. I guarantee you'll cry. You'll get, you may not bawl like a baby like I usually do, but I don't know how many times I watch this. And the movies never fail. I'm always freaking bawling all the time. But anyway, if you haven't seen All Mine to Give, 1957, Cameron Mitchell and Glennis Johns, uh, the mom and dad, and uh, the six kids, that's uh, a very good movie. I give it a high, a very good 8 out of 10. So, try and find All Mine to Give. You'll like it. The other one I watched was Carol. I think this takes place in the 50s, I think. Anyway, this is from 2015. It stars Kate Blanchett and Rooney, Rooney, Rooney Mara. She's a little bit older than this girl. You know, they meet, they hook up. They go on a trip together, you know. Um, it's, about, it's about females, girls. You know, and then this one had a, a little, well, baby, about four years old. And her husband and her is fighting over the child. And then she falls in love with this one and she falls in love with her. Anyway, it's a very good movie. I, I liked it for, for what it was. It's a girl movie. Let's be truthful. Um, I don't know how many guys would watch this movie. You know, I mean, I watch all kinds of movies. But I liked it. I thought it was good. And it's uh, Carol. I give it a seven. Now this one, what else do I watch here? I watched... Um, Vendetta, The Big Show, you know, Paul Wright, I think his name's Wright or Knight, Paul Knight, Paul Wright, The Big Show, you know, the wrestling guy, and Dean Cain. This one, mm, I don't know, this one's hard to believe. Anything that happens in this movie, very hard to believe. Dean Cain's wife gets killed. So, Dean Cain kills Big Show's brother, and Dean Cain ends up in the same jail as the Big Show. There's all kinds of killing and being done in the, you know, in jail, in the, you know, the big house. And, um, I don't know, it's kind of hard to believe. You know, you know, all these people are getting killed in jail, and it's like, what, what the hell's going on? Nobody's doing anything about it? There's no investigations? There's no, well, what's going on here? Like... And people die all the time, everybody's getting stabbed and killed, and it's like, uh, I don't know, this one's not, it's, it's alright, but I don't know about this one, I wasn't sure about this one, this is not very good, didn't like it, wasn't crazy over it, put it that way, uh, Vendetta, 2015, this probably went straight to video, I don't recall this ever being at the show, there must be a few movies that go straight to video, this is probably one of them. If anybody can remember this playing at the show, please let me know. This one gets a... Uh, six. It's alright, but... 
you don't have to watch this one. You don't have to seek it out or anything like that. If you come across it and you're bored and you got nothing to do, you can watch Vendetta. This one I watched, I think I watched this last night, this one. P2, I had it in my binder, and you know, one of my binders, and I was looking through the binder and I'm going, oh, what's this? Did I remember ever seeing this? I'm thinking, I don't think I saw this. So I gave it a look see last night. And you know what? To my surprise, it's a Christmas movie. It takes place December the 24th. Yeah, Christmas Eve. The Christmas trees, decorations, the whole nine yards. I'm thinking, oh, oh. Anyway, there's this girl working overtime in this 55 floor building or whatever, right? So she's in the office. Christmas Eve. I can see people working late Christmas Eve, but I don't know. Anyway, she's uh, one of the last ones to leave. <coughs> Excuse me. She's one of the last ones to leave the building. So she goes downstairs in the elevator. She's trying to get out, right? She can't get out. So she goes back upstairs on the first floor, looks for the, the doorman that's supposed to be there sitting at his desk. So he's not there. I wonder why. Anyway, he's not there, so one thing leads to another. And this, uh, what do you call it, uh, night night uh, watcher, you know, the guy who walks around uh, <laughs> the building, keeping an eye on things. He's the only one there. There's only one night watchman, which is kind of hard to believe. I don't know if that happens or not. But anyway, one thing leads to another. And the night watchman ends up with this girl in his office. Yeah. He kidnaps her, takes her, and you change her to the table and all that, and then she wakes up, you know, she put her to sleep or did something to her to put her to sleep. She wakes up and she's sitting there and he want, he's making supper, having a Christmas supper with her. I'm going, whoa, so this guy's a nut bar. You know, and his office is all decorated, all lit up and everything. Christmas in the city. Anyway. Anyway, this guy's a nut bar, right? And, you know, and she's sitting there and she's only got her, what is it, slip on or something. So she asks what happened to her clothes. And he says, well, you fell, which she helped her do. You fell, you got them all dirty. So, I, you know, I took the mafia and, you know, and put that on you. Oh, you know. So she says, you know, she has to leave families waiting for her. Anyway, it goes on and on and on and on. So anyway, she gets loose, runs through the building. And she ends up in, uh, in uh, what is a rental place where you rent cars. She's on the phone. She phones up 911. And guess what happens? Have you guessed? Yeah. Uh, sorry, we're kind of busy right now. Uh, we're all our lines are busy. So, if you, uh, you know, you either hold on to the phone or call back. Come on. Does that really happen in real life? Or just movies? I've seen a few movies where people called up 911 and they sat there and go, we're kind of busy now. Uh, anyway, far-fetched. So this Christmas movie that started off with jingle bells and Christmas trees and stuff turns out to be a horror movie, so-called horror movie, so-called. So he's chasing her all around the building, trying to get her and all that stuff. And it's a, anyway, the first half hour, is boring like come on what's what's happening here something's going on right well, come on pick it up so if you ever watch this movie you're better to skip you know go fast forward for about a half an hour and then start the movie so there you go this movie gets a six out of ten merry christmas movie yeah right horror horror upon horrors does she get away at the end? What happens? Do the cops save her? Does she get out? You have to watch the movie. As always, I don't give away the endings. Uh, what else did I watch? Oh yeah, this one. Christmas Story. You know, Ralphie? What's this, 1983? Something like that. Christmas Story, you'll shoot your eye out. Everybody knows this movie. It's not Christmas until you watch the Christmas Story. You start off Christmas by watching this movie, Christmas Story. That's hilarious. I think, when was this movie made in the, uh, what was the time period? I think 40s, wasn't it? 40s, 
46, 48, something like that. Time period with the old cars and stuff. And a lot of this movie was filmed there in Toronto. Yeah. A lot of scenes. And the streetcar, that streetcar goes by. Some of these movies have a, a ding, you know, when the streetcar goes by, the, the bell goes off. Ding, 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 ding. Some of them don't. So, anyway, the guy that's in the streetcar, when he drives by that movie scene, uh, doing, pulling the bell, you know, ding, ding, that's my buddy, Don Guy, yeah. He told me that he was down there riding that old streetcar, and he drove by, and he rang his bell. <laughs> but, like I said, some movies have it, some don't. Christmas Story, fantastic movie. Gets you right in the mood for Christmas. Family, brothers, old radios, shows, you know, stuff like that. Magazines, big little books, kids in school, you know, getting your tongue stuck on a pole. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's fun. Watch it. Gets a good top eight out of ten. You got to watch Ralphie. You'll shoot your eye out. And this one. Hope that's all. Is that all I watched? I think I did. Anyway. This one, Bad Santa or Batter Santa or whatever, Bad Santa, Batter Santa, 2003. Billy Bob Thornton, there's another Bad Santa that came out last year. Part two or two? Yeah. It wasn't very good. It was all right, but no, nowhere near this one. Bad Santa, Billy Bob Thornton and Laura Graham. She's a dish, Laura Graham, man. Oh yeah, she likes Santa Claus. So anyway, it's a story about this little kid, he hooks up with this little little fat chubby guy and he uh, goes to his house and he stays at his house and and then he, the girlfriend comes over and grandma's in the, in the front room and she wakes up and every time she wakes up she wants she wants to make somebody a sandwich. Here, let me make you a sandwich. <laughs> anyway, Bad Santa, that's hilarious. It's good for a laugh. If you haven't seen Bad Santa, seek it out. Y'all, it's fun. Yep. Bernie Mac's in it too. He's good in it too, Bernie Mac. Billy Bob Thornton. John Ritter. He's good. He's in it too. He's It's good too. So watch Bad Santa. Seek it out and watch it. That's it, people. That's the movies I watched this week. And they're starting up on the 12th floor in this building on the front here. Because I'm at the front, right? So as far as I know, they're starting to put new windows in this place uh, on Monday. So hopefully they'll be down here on my floor soon. Because pretty soon it's going to be Christmas time. And I'll have to put my tree up on all my nutcrackers and my decorations. And, you know, start getting ready for Christmas. Santa ain't going to come to your house unless you put your tree up. Anyway, that's what I was told. I've had a tree for 67 years. So i got to get my tree up. Yep, I decorate my tree. I got some new stuff to put on my tree this year, too. Yeah. I buy something new for my tree every year. Every year I buy something new. You got to get something new for your tree every year. Yep. So that's it. So keep watching those movies, and I'll talk to you again next week. So. Later, people.